And the law states, if to win disability as a younger individual, one of the key factors is, is there any job that exists in significant numbers in the United States that this person can do? So not just your past work, but any job. And so then if you're a neurosurgeon at 47 and you're like, hey, I've been this my whole career as a doctor, but I'm only 47, they may look at you and say, well, can you do some sort of small products assembly? Sure. Can you be, can you be a cashier at the grocery store? Right? Yeah. And, and, and if the answer is yes, you lose. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Hello, Peter. How are you? I'm great. Uh, you look good. Uh, the, the weather must be treating you very well down there. It's it's a tough place to live, I'm telling you. 75 degrees, no clouds. Uh, I think I'll go for a swim. <laughs> well, good for you. Uh, for our uh, for those who have not uh, listened to our podcast before, I want to introduce myself. My name is Peter Evans. I'm the managing partner of a law firm uh, called Evans Disability. We represent people before the Social Security Administration uh, and into federal court. Uh, and my guest today is Dan Hyatt, uh, who's a, an attorney who works for our firm, uh, represents people in front of the Social Security Administration as well. Um, but with such a risk, rich history of service, and I think the one of the more impressive ones uh, for today's purposes is a 20 plus year as a former Social Security law judge, uh, someone who used to adjudicate over uh you know, who I've actually been in front of as an attorney uh, representing people, and you are the judge handling the case, making the decisions. Uh, so you bring such a unique uh, perspective and a point of view, um, and as well as just, you know, for those who know you personally, just this just gigantic heart of uh, with this need to serve and to give to our community. So um, I am grateful to have you as a friend, uh, mentor, and someone we get to work with. So, thank you, Peter. Thank you very much. You're always so complimentary. I I want to adopt you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm ready. Um, so you and I got to chat a little bit before uh, we started recording, and what we thought would be a unique and kind of uh, interesting podcast for listeners would be to come up with maybe a top 10 list of some of the easiest cases to win and then a top 10 list of some of the more difficult type cases to win. And um, not that I want to focus on the glasses half empty, uh, but I want to chat with you. Uh, maybe let's start with the most difficult disability cases to win in front of the Social Security Administration. Um, and, uh, and we can kind of go through our top 10 list and talk about why. And so the number one thing at the top of the list uh, about the most difficult case to win were people under the age of 50 and younger. So 49, uh, and we're talking in adults in this category, 49 to 18. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe you can share with our audience why. Well, that's a good question, Peter. Um, there is a, a kind of a continuum in the regulations related to age. and. Congress, when they uh, enacted uh, the Social Security uh, rules and regulations, recognized that age is a, a negative factor on the ability uh, to work, that the older you get, the more difficult it is in general for you to adapt to a workplace environment, to uh, exert yourself, uh, because as you get older, you kind of, you're not so limber, you're not so strong, you know. So, but the way that the Social Security Administration has effectuated that is the rules become much more lenient once you turn 50. Uh, if, you're, if you're younger than 50, it's going to be more difficult. If you're 18, the assumption is that you're a strong, healthy individual who can... Uh, exert yourself, uh, you know, to lifting maybe 50 or 100 pounds occasionally. 
Well, you get to be 50, you can't do that anymore. And as maybe if you're 49 or 48, you can't do that anymore. So age is definitely a factor. Um, and this special, there are special rules related to age. Um, and one of the things that a judge would always consider is what kind of work have you done in the past? Right. So if you've only done a sit down job, you know, for most of your career or even part of your career, um, then maybe even though you're 50, you can still do a sit down job. And so that's something that uh, a judge is going to take into consideration uh, when looking at your case. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Some of the tougher cases are folks who are younger individuals. Um, and I think what I was saying was between the age of 49 and a half, it gives the judge has a little leeway um, right. with the ability to consider someone at 50. Now, one of the things that is legally defined by Social Security is the age categories. So as you know, someone between the ages of 18 and 49 is considered a, legally by Social Security what they call a younger individual. Yes. And Someone between the ages of 50 and 54 is considered closely approaching advanced age. Between the ages of 55 and 59, they're considered advanced age. And uh, between ages 60 and up to their retirement age, they're considered closely approaching retirement age. Mm -hmm. And that's what, the, that's what the law defines them at and treats each age category differently. Correct. And at the age of a younger individual, which is sort of why this has become so difficult, is because we may meet someone who is a neurosurgeon and 47 years old. And the law states if to win disability as a younger individual, one of the key factors is, is there any job that exists in significant numbers in the United States that this person can do. So not just your past work, but any job. And so then if you're a neurosurgeon at 47 and you're like, hey, I've been this my whole career as a doctor, but I'm only 47, they may look at you and say, well, can you do some sort of small products assembly? Sure. Can you be, can you be a cashier at the grocery store, right? Yeah. And, and, and if the answer is yes, you lose. Well, that's a really good point, Peter, and and it gets it can get very ridiculous with your neurosurgeon example. You know, a judge may say, "Well, I think you can work at a McDonald's." You know, you got, you know, your hands are shaky, so you can't be a surgeon anymore. But why can't you like make change at McDonald's? And so you got a forty-seven-year-old neurosurgeon working at McDonald's. I, you know. Right. Hypothetically, that is the way it would shake out. But that's the law. And that's why it's so difficult because people will be like, hey, I'm only, especially when you get to guys in their mid to late 40s, they're so close to the 50, but they're not there yet. And, and they're going to tell you, like, I've only done X, maybe vlogging or, or, or uh, being a truck driver, a commercial truck driver for the last 25 years of my career. Mm -hmm. And you have to work at, you know, McDonald's or be a, you know, put shoes in a shoebox. I know a judge who asked that question. You put shoes on a shoebox. Yeah. It's a bit ridiculous, but it, that is the law. And that's what makes it so hard. Right. Yeah. Yep. And as you get older into the each, and I'm explaining it to you just because you're happy to be sitting here. Obviously, you know this way better than me. Um, but I, for our audience sake, as you get older, that question drops off. It's not, can you do any job? And when I use the word any, I mean any job that exists in significant numbers in the national economy. Now it becomes more about, hey, let's take a look at what you used to do. What are you physically limited to as far as like your ability to sit, stand, walk, and live? Mm -hmm. And if you're in the right age category, we use, and Social Security uses words like sedentary, uh, light, medium, heavy, and very heavy. But And if you're in that closely approaching advanced stage and you happen to be limited to sedentary, they're not going to say, well, you could put, sit in a, uh, an assembly line and put shoes in a shoebox all day. They're going to say, well, 
does the neurosurgeon job have skills that transfer over to that kind of work? And if the answer is no, you win. Right. Right. And as you get older, it's like, then it's like limited to light duty. Right. And we can define right. that later. We have that, but then you, at 55, then it do transferable skills over to that. And it just gets easier and easier as you get older, but it is, I mean, under 50, you got to ha have all your uh, T's crossed and I's dotted. Let me ask you this. And this is, I'm just curious from your perspective as a judge. And maybe, you know, when you were back in the break room, uh, chit chat, chatting with all the other judges around the water cooler. Um, when you talk to folks, what is the perception? Because my legally, there shouldn't be a difference between a 48 year old and a 25 year old, right? As far as application of the rules. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, someone who's worked within the walls of Social Security, I feel like the 25 year old takes it a little bit rougher and more evidence to prove than even that 45. -year -old. I think that's true. And I think it's just uh, the law recognizes that as people get older, they their body changes and they, they're not capable of doing uh, the same physicality of work that they were when they were younger. I mean, you could be 45. I've seen 45-year-olds that look like they're 60, you know, and I've seen them that look like they're 25. So... That you know, you can't really judge somebody by it, the way they look, but you can apply the rules as as regards age, uh, pretty uh, pretty pretty much across the board. There's not a lot of flexibility on that. I I've had a judge literally tell me in a hearing with uh, someone in their twenties, and I I don't want to say the name of the judge, but the judge told me. I'm so reluctant to put a 20 year old onto social security disability for the, you know, what's likely going to be the rest of their life. And, you know, and I'm a claims representative. So I, we represent people. So I'm on the other side of this and I'm like thinking to myself, but that shouldn't be part of the analysis. What needs to be part of the analysis is this quintal evaluation and you stick there. Does he meet or equal a listing? Does it, uh, you know, go through that, but don't, don't carry that hand and and you can re request a cdr in three years so that's what i i mean i well, yeah. at least you, why don't you request a cdr in three years um you know you make, so, go ahead yeah. well i was just going to say you make two good points one is that um you know i felt when i was a judge uh that it's a it's kind of a big responsibility to tell somebody that they're disabled, that, you know, that affects people in a very big way. Some people want to be disabled. I don't know, maybe they don't, but they kind of act like it. They like, you know, I'd sure like to get that check every month, which isn't going to be that much money compared to what they could earn if they work. But the other point that you make that's really good is that most people think, oh, I'll just be on disability for a little while. It doesn't really work that way. When, when a judge makes a decision, he or she has to recognize that, and I, as a judge, I have told claimants this, do you realize that you're asking for, say, $300,000 because you're only 25 years old, you have a life expectancy to age 65, so for 40 years, you're going to collect, I don't know, $12,000 a year or something, you know, so... That's a also increases the responsibility of the judge hearing the case to recognize that that's that's a pretty big hit, you know. Yeah. Do Do you think judges should recognize that? That's yeah. part of the case. I don't. I do not think so. But I think it's inescapable because it's not like workers' comp, where you can just get a partial disability or you can get. Uh, disability and then they close out your claim after a couple of years and give you a lump sum. It's not like that. And it's unfortunate because I think it should be people, you know, I, I've, I've seen people when I was a judge, I've seen people that they got a continuing review 
and it's 20 years after they were found disabled. And whatever their impairment was, they're 20 years older, and they outgrew it or, you know, they got better, and nobody ever said, oh, please don't give me Social Security anymore uh, because I've gotten better. I mean, I suppose some people have, but it, it wouldn't be the normal expect ex expectancy, I don't think. Sure. I, I've i seen, you know, I've seen it all over the board, but I, I you know, I just... I think for people under the age of 50 and those particular cases, the younger you are, closer to 18, 19, 20-year-olds going on to disability, it just is a harder case to win. Mm -hmm. Even from a legal standpoint, you and I both agree, judges should not treat a 20-year-old 20 20-year-old 20 person different than a 30-year-old or a 40-year-old because they're all in that bunch together in that same age category, younger individual. But- you, you and I agree that if you're 19 or 20 or 21, the administration, man, they make those kids jump through hoops. And I use the word kids, but adults jump through yeah. hoops to yeah. in a disability case, however you feel about it or not. Now, right. where you and I are kind of talking about, judges do take that into, into consideration, whether they should or not. You know, I don't believe they should. I don't think that's what they were hired to do. I do believe that some judges believe in themselves as the, you know, the banker of the Social Security Trust. And I would always argue, well, I think you were hired to actually just to uh, say yay or nay on disability cases. Uh, and you weren't actually required to be the bank keeper of the disability trust. Now, I get why they feel that way. And I, and most judges, I can appreciate why they feel that way, but I don't think that's really part of the legal criteria of what they were hired to do. Uh, but that's just my opinion. But I don't want to deep to that. I don't want to go off the cliff on that too much. Um, yeah. So, so the number one type of case is under fifty. What's the number two one? We and I'll, it was mental health is what we kind of talked about. Mental health only case. Thank <laughs> you.